t-test for the difference of two means in paired samples, including Excel. Hi, I'm Dr Nick from Creative Maths, including Statistics Learning Centre. In this video, I'm going to demonstrate a t-test for the difference of two means in paired samples. To find out the difference between paired samples and independent samples, watch the video Paired Samples and Independent Samples in Statistical Analysis. For other related videos, see the description below. We want to compare how students score in a statistics test taken before and after tutoring. Each observation or line in the data refers to one person, for whom there are two scores, taken before and after the tutoring. Before we begin the analysis, we need to plot the data. Box plots are a quick way to see what the data is indicating. This box plot summarises the before scores and the after scores as if the two measurements were independent. We can see that it looks as if the after scores have a higher mean. Because our samples are paired, we can investigate the differences in the two scores for each individual student. We define the difference D as the score from the after test minus the score from the before test. This is the box plot of D, the difference between the scores for each of the students. We believe that tutoring will increase the score in a statistics test, so the difference will be greater than zero. In the plot we can see that most of the differences are greater than zero, and the mean and the median are around eight. On average the scores seem to have increased by about eight. With a difference this great, it seems likely that we have evidence of an effect in the population from which the sample was drawn. Our alternative hypothesis is that the mean of D in the population, mu D, is greater than zero. This implies that the scores after tutoring were higher. Our null hypothesis is that mu D in the population is zero or less. This would happen if the scores after tutoring are the same or lower. We will use the steps of hypothesis testing. The first step is to set up the hypotheses, which we have done. Step 2. Choose our level of significance. We will choose alpha equals 0 0.05. Step 3. Take a sample. The sample is of 34 students with scores from before and after tutoring. Strictly speaking, for inference to be valid, the sample should be random and representative. In reality, this is often not the case. Step 4. Calculate the p-value. We will use Excel's t-test paired to sample for means. The data is in two columns. We use the data analysis tool pack and select t-test paired to sample for means. We highlight the variable 1 range, including the label. Then we highlight the variable 2 range and label. The hypothesized mean value is 0 as we are testing to see if the difference in score is greater than 0. If we leave this out, the program will assume that it is 0. We tick next to labels as we have included the labels in the variable ranges. We leave the alpha value as 0 0.05 and select the output range. Then we click OK, widen the columns and examine the output. We check that there is the correct number of observations. Then we look at the p-value for the one-tailed test as indicated earlier. The p-value is 1.07 e-11. This is the same as 1 times 10 to the negative 11, which is pretty much zero. The t-statistic is 9.89. This means that the mean of the after score is 9 standard errors above the mean of the other score. That is a very big difference that is clearly statistically significant. Step 5 is to decide. P is low, null must go. We reject the null hypothesis that the mean difference was 0 and we say that we have evidence that the mean difference in the population from which the sample was drawn is greater than 0. A very small p-value gives us strong evidence that there is an effect in the population. The p-value does not tell us about the strength of the effect. With a big enough sample, even a small effect can be significant. Note that we do not have evidence that the tutoring caused the increase in score. 
we would need to use a controlled experiment to claim causation. See in the description below for links to videos explaining this further. In the video introducing paired samples, we also looked at data around cat food preference. We wish to test which of two cat food varieties is more appealing to cats. We have a sample of 15 cats. On one day we offer each cat one variety and measure how much it eats, and the next day we offer the other variety, and again measure how much it eats. We graph the data with a box plot and an arrow diagram. It does not look as if there is a difference between the amounts of the two varieties each cat ate. We will test using a paired t-test. We define the difference D as the difference between the amount of nubbles and the amount of yum that a cat ate. We do not know which food will be preferred, so this is a two-tailed test. The alternative hypothesis is that mu d is different from zero, written as mu d is not equal to zero. The null hypothesis is that mu d is equal to zero. We analyse the data from the sample using Excel as before. From the output we find that p is 0.48. This is not a low p-value, so we do not reject the null hypothesis. There is no evidence of different amounts eaten between the two varieties of cat food. When we look at the graph of the data, we can see that some cats ate more of one food and some ate more of the other, but there was no clear difference over the whole sample. The graph should always tell the same story as the analysis. If it does not, you need to check both the graph and the analysis. Check in the description below for links to related videos. This video was brought to you by Dr. Nick at Creative Mass. Please like this video, subscribe, but most of all, join the channel, especially if you are using our videos in your teaching. Help the channel grow and help me help more and more people like you. I am truly grateful for my channel members who help make these videos possible.